is just so tentative on the ball and uh, teams are able to feel really comfortable and when people feel comfortable in the start of a game in the NBA they, they can get it rolling well Chris Finch talking about the importance of the Timberwolves being physical in setting the tone for a game early and Jim they actually did a decent job of that the first couple of minutes it was a 3-3 game with eight and a half minutes remaining in this opening quarter and uh, the problem is the Timberwolves have never gotten anything going offensively yeah offensive inefficiency has been what's characterized this first quarter for Minnesota D'Angelo Russell, Jordan McLaughlin in the backcourt for the Wolves with Juancho Aaron and Gomez and Nas Reed. Minnesota can't get that shot to go. Jaden McDaniel stays on the floor to defend. Clarkson. Minnesota used length against Jordan Clarkson and it, it worked pretty well. Whether it was Wancho, Jaden, or Vanderbilt, they had length against him, and it really did pay dividends as O'Neal makes that shot. Yeah, credit George Niang, Jim. He was the person who got the back tap to get Utah a second chance on that position. McDaniels, no. Able to fight for the rebound, though. Wancho, straightaway three. Excellent job by Jane McDaniels. Missed the jumper, but stayed with it. Got the poke away. And able to get it to Wancho, who knocks down the three. Vanderbilt's getting ready to check into the game for Jake McDaniels. Clarkson fights his way into the paint, finds favors underneath. Russell behind the back for Reed. And back to back threes from that exact spot on the floor for Minnesota. Nice to see it fall down for Nas as well. He'd made only three of his yeah. last 16. O'Neal from the wing. And he answers right back. Royce O'Neal. They've been knocking down shots. We talked about how Utah Jazz lead the league at three-point makes per game. Nearly 17 per, which would be an all-time NBA per game record if they can keep the pace up. Again, D'Angelo Russell in pick and roll game was able to draw two defenders. And so when, when you were able to take Royce O'Neal and Derek Favors and contain them and make them have to guard, and Favors is not a great closeout player out on the perimeter. Nas Reed, his ability to space the floor is a lot like Carl Anthony Towns, and he's able to knock down that shot. But credit D'Angelo Russell for making the play. Well, stay tuned during the second half because tonight we're giving you the chance to score a classic mini Timberwolves basketball and 20% off at the team store. It's watch them and win them and keep watching the game for your chance to win. Some of the depth that the Utah Jazz are able to flex. They bring in Irzan Ilyasova, who was a nice pickup for them. They just recently brought him in. And boy, is he a professional. He yeah. has been great wherever he's been, Dave. We've been a big fan of his for a long time. Milwaukee cut him, Jim, right before the season started. And he sat out of the league waiting for the right opportunity. And signing on yeah. with Utah, probably a pretty good idea. Yeah, he's got Utah Jazz DNA, and there's no doubt. Clarkson, meantime, gets his second bucket of the game. To be able to hold Clarkson and, you know, some of these really good Utah Jazz shooters down. Nice pass that time by Nas. Vanderbilt unable to finish. We're going to get a loose ball foul as V8 reached in after the miss. The interior defense that time. Great wall up by George Niang. Vanderbilt's got to take his time and make that little layup inside. Oscar Conley back on the floor for the Jazz. And I did say Oscar because if you didn't know Mike Conley along with Kevin Durant they won an Oscar last night <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that because <laughs> I know his name is Mike Conley Jr. as Wancho just cans a three that was a thing of beauty second three of the game yeah Conley and Kevin Durant they were executive producers yes they on were. a live action short film called Two Distant Strangers and they they won last night that's uh, pretty impressive, and I don't. I know Kobe Bryant won an Oscar, Jim. I don't know if there's any other NBA players other than Kobe, yeah. Mike Conley, and Kevin Durant who could say they've won Oscars. Well, I saw Mike Conley talking about that. That Kobe kind of led the way, you know, his retirement, and then 
the fact that he won an Oscar and was doing great things kind of opened the floodgates. I'm guessing that's one trophy he's going to position very well wherever he has his, his trophies. I know Kobe, after he won his, said it was the most prized possession he had, despite all his heroics on the basketball Think about court. that. Well, it's, it's, it's going outside your comfort zone and then becoming great at something else, which is not always easy for really anybody. Think about anybody that's accomplished at something in their in their career. What a cut by Jordan McLaughlin. Wolves turn it over, though, again. Sixth turnover of the game. It's going, to be, it's going to be the undoing. It normally is. The Utah Jazz, when you look and sort for points off turnovers, when you look at their game log and you sort for points off turnovers, Dave, they're five and six in games where they have 23 points or more points off turnovers against them. So the Wolves have been able to do it twice. Conley gets his first bucket from the field tonight. So there's really no team that's impervious to it. You, you, you turn it over, you, it's going to make you pay. Nas can't get that to go. This is the 16th time this season the Timberwolves have trailed double digits in the first quarter. The win on Saturday was one of only two comeback wins when they've dug themselves this big of an early hole. Elias Silva gets it away as the clock expires, and no question it was out of his hand on time. And the Timberwolves, they held the Jazz down early, and then Utah found its footing. A 16-point lead for the Jazz here in downtown Minneapolis at the end of 12 minutes.